Good day, church family, and welcome to the LJCC update for Thursday, September the 10th. Well, I really want to say thank you for your prayers as we got started on our new Wednesday night class, Can I Trust the Bible, last night. It was a bit of a challenging start, maybe even a little chaotic, but we got off to a good start. We resolved the technical issues, and we were able to really have a great class with really good attendance. A few people on through people in person and a good number of people that came in by Zoom. If you want to join our class, and again, I want to encourage you to do that, there's plenty of room for you to come in person, particularly if you're dropping off someone who's in the youth group or the fifth and sixth grade classes and want to stay just there in class while they, while they meet, you're welcome to do that. But for those of you who want to attend by way of Zoom, I'm going to need you to help me with something. I want you to text Trust Bible, like you see it there at the bottom of the screen, to 979-217-3300. We're going to start a different subscription list for that. So if you want to get your notification for the Zoom meeting by phone, that's the way to do it. But I also know, after last night's experience, that there are several of you that just want uh, to do it on your computers, and so an email is more helpful to you. If you're in that category, I want you to email office at LJ Church and put in the subject line something about can I trust the Bible. We'll add you to an email distribution list and get that out to you as quickly as possible. I want to be sure and note that the ladies Wednesday night Bible study continues and it's a great experience for all those who are there. Uh, it's by Zoom only. Uh, all our women are welcome, and if you'd like to be included in that, please be sure and contact Lisa Pauls or Joyce Chapa for more information. I want to ask that you continue to hold up our life groups in, our, in your prayers. It now it looks like we'll be trying to get started on around Sunday, September the 27th. There will probably be some in-person groups that will meet. There will probably also be some online-only groups that will meet. And again, as I've mentioned before, at least one, maybe even two attempts to have an online and in-person uh, group that goes on at the same time. Contact Mark Davis, Mark K. Davis, for more information. Or if you would like to, again, uh, tell him that you'd be interested in leading a group. Well, the biggest change is coming up this week is that this Sunday morning, September the 13th, our Kids for Christ team is ready to reopen, restart our Praise Kids Stage 2 and even our Limitless Kids during our worship and also at 9.30, Bible classes for all ages. When I say all ages, make sure you know that Kids for Christ are starting the children's classes. Peter is going to be having the junior high and high school class, but there'll also be a class for our adults as well. It will meet in the Fellowship Center. Chad Abney and Jerry Miller will be teaching that class. I know that you won't want to miss that. We have prepared a video, Kids for Christ Welcome Back, that kind of enumerates the protocols, especially for your parents. I want to thank very much the Kids for Christ team for their leadership team for their leadership and their faithfulness and helping us get restarted and reopening in this way. I'm going to ask you to watch. It's about a five minute video. Take the time to do that. I think even if you don't have children in the program, you'll want to be informed uh, about the protocols that we're asking our teachers and our families, our students to, to follow. So I'll Watch the video, and I'll be back with you to finish up with prayer when it's done. Thanks, everyone, for watching this video that will give you a little bit of an orientation to reopening of our Kids for Christ programs, Praise Kids, Stage 2, Limitless Kids, as well as our Sunday morning Bible classes. Please know that our Kids for Christ leadership team has been meeting and pondering these issues and discerning what's the best thing to do. They have done that prayerfully and with the hopes not only to uh, bless our kids and bless our families, but also to honor God and what they wanted to do. These are parameters that this team has asked for us to uh, communicate to you and the teachers have been asked to comply with. The Kids for Christ leadership team have put these guidelines in place to provide a safe environment for your students as well as our teachers to reopen these programs. 
But as you all know, it doesn't matter what protocols we follow, nothing will prevent infection 100%. But again, we're trying to do our best to provide that safe environment. And above all else, we need your cooperation. And in advance, we want to say thank you for your cooperation with this process. First, the Kids for Christ leadership team needs you as parents and guardians to ensure before arriving that your children do not have a fever of 100 degrees or higher. Please ensure that they don't have any respiratory infections, a cough, sneezing regularly, any shortness of breath, or also any vomiting or diarrhea within the last 24 hours. Please consider also, in the past 14 days, has your student had contact with someone with a confirmed positive test of COVID or someone who is under investigation for COVID-19 virus? Second, our Kids for Christ leadership team has asked that these procedures be in place. First of all, all those who are staffing our programs will be required to wash or sanitize their hands before arriving in a classroom. Also, hand sanitizer will be located at the entrance of each area for our adults and our children. Teachers will regularly prompt students to use the hand sanitizers while in the classroom. Helpers will always have a mask on over their mouth and nose, but teachers will not be required to wear a mask while they are giving instructions or verbally teaching. Parents should communicate to teachers when they arrive at the classroom whether or not they want their child to wear a mask during class. Social distancing is a difficult issue for all of us, but especially our kids. They just don't understand the concept. Our rooms have been rearranged to provide for more distance between students. Teachers and helpers will work to help kids maintain the best social distance possible in those scenarios. Social distancing includes not allowing the students to sit next to each other and spreading the kids uh, apart during activities. If social distancing can't be maintained, the teachers have the choice to require students to wear a mask. Not that we probably even need to say this, but please know that we're making an effort, extra effort to make sure that our classrooms are thoroughly cleaned both before and after the use of each of these programs. In addition, there'll be no shared supplies in the rooms. Each child will be provided with a personal supply set for projects and activities. Supplies that are used by a child will be sanitized before another child uses them if that needs to take place and any used supplies that cannot be disinfected or washed will immediately be discarded. Also, snacks will be given in pre-packaged form or they'll be handed out in individual containers by teachers and helpers only. And finally, classroom doors will remain open when possible to better uh, help us with airflow and ventilation. We want you to know the protocol if a child becomes sick during class. If fever develops or other significant symptoms are observed, the child will be removed from the other children and the parents will be called to come pick up. The other parents in the class will be notified as soon as possible. We are so excited to see all of our LJCC kids back let us know if you have any other questions or concerns we can help with. See you this Sunday. Well, thanks for watching. It'll be available on the home page for a few weeks, and then it'll be under the Kids for Christ tab on our website. Well, as we begin our time of prayer, I want to be sure that we lift up Peter and his group that are headed out on Friday evening. They're headed to Lake Charles to help with cleanup. 
Uh, they'll be returning Sunday evening. There is still time when you, if you see this before Friday evening to bring in donations of water or non-perishable food. These are donations just for this group so that they don't have to depend on any uh, outside sources for their, for their own food. Uh, you can bring those donations up to the church building anytime before noon. The office will be open. If you're not able to be here before noon on Friday, please contact Peter for details about how you might drop those off. And I believe that if you decide at this last minute that you want to go and be a part of that, uh, there is still space available for you to join them. Mike Baumgartner and his disaster assistant team is busy as they can be. They're operating out of Orange, Texas at this time. I know that they are preparing for when they're going to be able to get into Lake Charles proper when running water and power are more easily accessible. Tomorrow, Randy Moore is going to be driving some supplies that are intended for his food distribution out there. So let's remember Randy uh, in, in our prayers as he travels as well this weekend. I want you to be praying about as we anticipate, no firm decision made yet, as, but we anticipate that there will be at least one special contribution that will be intended to help disaster assistance in what they're doing. And our missionaries Joaquin in the DR and Jean-Baptiste in Haiti as they help in their countries recover from this same Hurricane Laura. Well, we're really thankful. We got word today that Sandra Mullins' surgery in Galveston went as well as the doctors could have hoped for. She will be spending at least a night there tonight, but again, the surgery went really, really well, and we're thankful, thankful to hear that information. We don't have a long prayer list today, just a couple updates, and, uh, but I would want you to continue to keep Paula Roper in your prayers as she continues to struggle with back pain. Uh, again, she says that she misses all of you, uh, but we want to keep her in our prayers as she's struggling with that and how she might move forward in addressing that. Some birthdays to remember. Big day on Saturday, September the 11th. Bill Lewis, Corbin Hale, and Drew Ritchie will be celebrating birthdays. Then on Monday the 14th, Colton Foster has a birthday. And then next Thursday, Tess Abney has her first birthday off at college. So let's see if we can get some cards in the mail and get them there for her before next Thursday. One anniversary to celebrate, and it'll be again next Thursday, the 16th, Kevin and Beatrice Dars. We say happy anniversary to them. Well, I ask that you'll continue to remember to check our website to there. Once you get there, you can visit our Facebook page real easily with the link there and download the caring and sharing. Uh, you can do that all week long just to check on things anywhere you are right there on your phone. You don't have to be at your computer, uh, but it'll also be out sometime later tomorrow. The new one will be out. So be sure and continue. And thanks for staying up with us in those way. Let's join together in prayer as we close out. Father, we're thankful to get to celebrate these birthdays with folks. We're thankful for the Darce anniversary, and we pray your blessings on them. Father, we are so thankful that Sandra's surgery went well today. Long ways from fully recovered, but, and we pray for that recovery to be as full as possible. But right now, Father, we just want to thank you that this surgery went so well. Father, we want to continue to lift up Bernice Skinner. We pray that you will continue to help her and, and help Jack as he helps her to, to work hard to recover as quickly and as fully as possible. We continue to lift up Joanne Fillo as she continues in her fight against cancer. We lift up Paul Roper and her struggles with her back. We lift up Sherman Estes, April Lubke, Helen Cole, and April Barton in all of their situations. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for uh, bringing us to this point where we're ready to reopen our Kids for Christ in-person ministry on Sunday mornings. We want to thank you for uh, people that are from this congregation that are headed out to, to help with those recovering from Hurricane Laura. We pray for Mike Baumgartner and the Disaster Assistance Ministry particularly as they engage with people, supply meals to so many, uh, continue to give Mike the energy he needs, continue to help him to be as well supplied and stocked as he can be. Help us as we can help him as well. But really, we thank you for people all over the country who are supporting him financially.
and for all those folks that are going in person to help people recover. We pray for the witness and the testimony that people who love you and want to represent you in that process. We pray and we look forward to the way that you'll be glorified through those efforts. Again, Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We pray this in Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. Thanks for joining me today. Go Texans! Bye.